Hello, Grisha, and welcome back to Nerd Doc. Shadow and Bone Season 2 has just released on Netflix, and this video explains the ending of the season, where things are heading should Netflix greenlight a third season of the series, and some of the changes between the show and the novels. That means there will be spoilers for Shadow and Bone Season 2 in this video. This is your spoiler warning. If you have any questions about the video or something we didn't cover, leave a comment below and we'll answer as best we can. The first season of Shadow and Bone covered the events of the first Grishaverse novel, Shadow and Bone, as well as offered a prequel of sorts to the events in the Six of Crows novel. Season 2 covers the second and third books in the series, Siege and Storm, and Ruin and Rising, as well as touching on some of the events in Six of Crows. Most of the events featuring the Crows are completely new, but widely based on what happens in Six of Crows, as that's where it seems a potential Season 3 will lead. As a quick recap, the Darkling survived the events of Season 1, and now Alina and Mal must find the second and third amplifiers to make Alina strong enough to take down the Fold and defeat Kerrigan. Along the way, they encounter Sturman the Privateer, who is definitely not a pirate, who ends up being the second son of the King. This also leads them to ally with Bagra, the Darkling's mother, in search of the third amplifier created by her father, the Darkling's grandfather. It was originally thought this amplifier was a firebird, but in reality it was a bloodline. When Bagra was young, she accidentally killed her sister. However, their father resurrected her sister, and that essentially turned her sister's bloodline into the firebird, which is just another name for a phoenix, which represents resurrection. Over the years, the bloodline was passed down from generation to generation, eventually ending up in Mal, meaning that Mal is actually the cousin of Kerrigan the Darkling. That also meant Mal had to die in order for Alina to use him as an amplifier. In the end, this is exactly what happens, but Alina then uses powers similar to the Darkling Shadow Monsters, the Nichivoya. This will almost certainly lead to unique consequences in Season 3 that will also probably result in Alina's eventual death. There's quite a lot that happens at the end of the season, and while most of it should be familiar to fans of the books, the show has taken a number of liberties, especially in the second season. Some of the explanations in this video may be slightly different once a third season comes around, just depending on how closely the next season sticks to the lore in the books. First, let's address the big finale. We see a heart render at the king's coronation, but there's something wrong with her. She's extremely powerful, able to cripple the entire room, but she's clearly not well. This is a result of the Jirda Parim drug. As Kaz says in his dialogue, this is a new drug that amplifies Grisha abilities 1,000 times over, but it's extremely addictive and actually lethal to non-Grisha. While it's an amazing amplifier, like many drugs, it drastically weakens the body of the Grisha user. It's killed every Grisha that's used it except for one, and that sole survivor was forever changed. The introduction of the new drug leads right into Season 3, and is a big part of the Six of Crows novel that the next season will likely focus on. We go into detail on that in our Season 3 predictions video, which you can find linked in the description, but in short, Nina becomes a badass, more so than she already is. Wylan will likely be played by a new actor, sorry Jack Wolf fans, but he goes undercover in the Six of Crows novel, which means he has to look like someone else for most of the book, and likely most of season 3. Technically Nina goes undercover as well, but her physical changes are less significant, so it's possible Netflix keeps the same actress, only making minor changes, like to the color of her hair and eyes. The final scene of Season 2 comes to an end when Alina uses the Darkling's power to slice the Grisha in half. This is where things get a little bit confusing. How does Alina suddenly have the Darkling's power? In the books, there's a much better explanation, and we may get the series version of that in Season 3, but essentially, when Alina was in the process of killing Kerrigan, she absorbed some of his powers. In the books, this happens much sooner, and Alina actually trains with Bagra, learning to control her shadow powers somewhat. But obviously that won't happen in the series since Bagra is now gone. Therefore, Alina will likely train on her own or possibly with Zoya, but expect her to get those powers under control and become a formidable opponent in the future. Now let's back up a bit and discuss what happens to the new king, Nikolai. His wound from the Darkling's Nichivoya causes him to eventually turn into one himself at night. This is something that will plague the king throughout season 3 and will likely be his main storyline for the next season. 
Nikolai will have to go to great lengths to rid himself of this illness. Despite the Darkling being gone, his impact will remain on many of these characters as the series shifts into the next season. Mal being the new Sturmund is a completely new direction and a big change from the book. As we'll discuss in a moment, this was done to keep Mal in the story for season 3, which means Mal is likely going to have new adventures that will tie into either the Crow story arc for season 3, or his crew will help Nikolai get rid of the shadow creature within him. Mal has become his own character now, and is no longer directly attached to Alina, which means he is likely to see big changes between now and the end of the third season. Since season 2 covers two books in only eight episodes, there were a number of liberties taken to make this work, and also maintain one focused storyline for the series as a whole, instead of the various branching storylines from all the different novels in the Grishaverse. Book purists may be a little upset at some of the changes, but overall it does probably work better for the TV series format. One of the biggest changes is the fact that Alina and Mal leave at the end of Ruin and Rising, which would be the end of season 2 of the series. The public thinks Alina died in battle, but the reality is that Alina no longer has her powers after the final battle that destroyed the fold. Alina and Mal get married, go back to where they were raised, and eventually take over the orphanage. This was likely changed because the showrunner wants to keep Alina and Mal in the series. If they had followed the book, neither of them would show up in season 3. With these changes, both of them should now be a big part of the next season, and even a potential season 4, depending on how much ground is covered in season 3. This change is similar to the changes for the Crows. If the show followed the books more closely, none of the Crows would be involved in the first two seasons. While many of the events in Season 2 featuring the Crows are taken directly from the Six of Crows novel, or setting up the events of that novel, many of these characters do not interact with the main cast of Alina, Mal, and the rest. The way these storylines are woven together in the series allows fans to see all these characters interact, which is a great change, but still very different from the books. Some other minor changes in the show are done mainly to prolong certain events. For example, Bagra sacrifices herself in a battle with the Darkling, but it's in a big battle and not directly related to Morozov and finding the Firebird. In fact, after her death they go searching for the Firebird, with Mal attempting to track it for several days before they finally realize Mal is the Firebird. Nikolai also turns into a shadow monster during the battle and isn't changed back until after the Darkling dies. As you can see, most of the major plot beats are still there, it's just which characters are involved and how they get to those plot beats that's been changed. And of course, Inej and Nina are not part of the final battle against the Darkling either. Instead, it's Tola and Tamar, who are also the ones who save Mao's life, instead of Alina seemingly using Mirzos to make it happen. So what did you think of Shadow and Bone Season 2? Are you okay with some of the big changes from the book to the series? How do you think Alina and Mao will be integrated into the next season? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. For now, that wraps up this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with someone who loves the Grishaverse.